Lucy here and today I'm filming a video that's going to be like a 2020 review of what I'm finished um, also what projects I'm bringing into 2021 and then finishing off some plans um, I have already filmed a video today and that was a, my unboxing for the date in stitching um, retreat in the box by the Black Needle Society so that either may be up before this one after depending on how the timing goes but that's also being filmed and yeah I know I haven't really done an update video since probably about October November um, I did do some vlog styles and then a major big video in December but that hasn't really shown you any of my progress and things like that I guess it comes down to that recently we've had a lot of things going on um, with my own life as well family um, I touched a bit about this before but my uncle has his health isn't great and um, we had some health issues um, in December that were quite concerning so kind of just went a little bit radio silent from there then dad my dad had to have um, both eye, eye surgery um, a cataract so he's fine now just doing the regular follow-ups with the drops at the moment but that that also kind of took a toll and then so we had school holidays so that's been good being able to have um, some time off from school done some stitching yeah I'd say we've done some stitching but also a chance just to spend time with family and caught up with some friends and kind of wait until I heard about a job and I do I'm really happy I have a job this year so I'm out of school a little bit out north so it's a bit more time for me to get there in the mornings but it's an amazing school. It has a really, really good reputation and um, I'm hopeful that I can live up to their expectations. So we actually start again tomorrow. So we start school tomorrow, which is we Wednesday. Our school decided to have three days of work last week um, so that we could have Monday, Tuesday off this week. So we have kids back tomorrow and I'm teaching all maths this year. So of four different levels so I've got four classes all different year levels um, but I'm quite excited to be doing that so I'm teaching year 8 maths, year 9, 10 and then year 11 essentials so it's going to be hard work but at the moment it's a semester of fingers crossed for me that it turns into a year long job other than that that's what I'm heading into at the moment so stitching may slow down a little bit depending on how long it takes me to get into the routine of the school um, which is different because it's also a 10 day rotational timetable but we'll have fun and it'll be good that way so how about we get started so 2020 coming in came back from Jan in January from the US with my friends and mum and dad we had an amazing trip and then did some stitching with that as well then of course um, the virus happened so COVID and then it was an interesting year from there um, in March, April was when the Show Me retreat was supposed to happen. Um, I wasn't able to any would go anywhere. So then the Black Needle Society released having their boxes um, sent to us via, like you can have the retreat at home and do it virtual. And holy moly, what's happened to that? Their business has just gone absolutely, um, um, basically expanded so much. And from there, they did the frog wet spots and they've done like the trick or treat, fall under stitching, um, the 25 nice spots. And so their year just exploded. And I've been lucky enough to be able to participate and help out with that as well. So that kind of shaped up last year for me in 2020. Okay, you could say that um, 2020 was the year of starts for me. I've just checked and I came into 2020 with six charts officially or patterns that I had going. However, I have um, put one of those aside as a UFO and I'm going to restart it later. And I'll talk about that now. So, that one here is this one here. So, it's one of my her first Heaven and Earth designs. Um, this one is called Once Upon a Time. It's a quit stitch by Amy Stewart. And I, I love this, okay? I really love this pattern. And I was given it as a rack even before I started Elsa. And I started, when I started working on this, um, it was the 1st of January 2015. However, coming into last year, which is 2020, I'd only done two and a half pages in five years. And I've stitched a massive hate in three years. 
so I knew there was something about that project that I just didn't like. And the thing I hated about that project is the fabric. Um, I was stitching it on 22 count 2 over 1. But the fabric was not a soft fabric like I used for Elsa. It was really different and it was hard to see the holes. Which is crazy. So I'm not counting that as a whip anymore. I still have the fabric and if someone would like what I've done so far with it. I'm happy to give it to you and send it to you. Um, you just need to get the pattern. But I'm going to restart that probably next year sometime. I just need a, another year or so just to have some space from it. And then I'll restitch it again. It's only This is only 12 pages long. It's not a big project. Um, I could have done this within a year. Year and a half. When I was stitching on Elsa, I used to be stitching at least one, maybe one and a half pages a month. I had her done in two and a half years and she was 36 pages long. Why couldn't I get this done? So I'm just saying it's my UFO. I'm happy to give again. If you want the pattern, message me. Not the pattern. If you want the whip, like my progress, message me. I can send you photos. You can have it. Um, I don't want it. I'm just, I've got fabric ready to start. I meant to start it in 2020 and on um, fabric, but I just mentally need another year break. So I'll start that next year. Then coming in, I have quite a few, been working on different projects throughout the year. My tastes have got a bit of variety now. And we'll start with finishes. So in 2020, I only had two finishes. Um, which is fine for me because I stitch really, really big projects and I was happy to get these finishes. We'll start with the one that I finished first. All right, so the project that I finished first on during 2020 was my Frog Watts piece designed by the Black Needle Society. So this was stitched on um, 32 count ice coffee even weave from, and I think it's actually five, I don't know where it's from. Well, I bought it from Sew It All, so I don't know where they actually buy it from. And this is what my finish looks like. And I've done a few modifications along the way compared to what the actual pattern looks like too. But I started this on the 29th of June, and then I finished it on the 19th of July. Didn't quite manage to um, finish it during the Frog Watts retreat, which would have helped. And I'll go more into that in a sec. I had a couple of oops. But this pattern is just stunning. So I've done a couple of different modifications. So you can see throughout the pattern there's the birdie box beams. And I've used a variety of different variegated threads. Whether they're from DMC or Semco. And so they're different. I've also decided with my snitch. I stitched the main body of the snitch there in a 12 threads. And then the wings are stitched with um, petite treasure braid, and you can see that sparkle. Then heading over to where the mirror is, let's see if I can see over here. We can see over here we have the mirror. With the mirror, I decided to stitch again the outside with the 12 thread, so you can see that. But instead, in the middle, it's supposed to be stitched with white. I decided to stitch it with the petite treasure braid pearl, which I have plenty left over from when I stitched Elsa. So you can see that that shimmers and I just love this pattern. It's amazing. There's a couple of also like little mistakes with some spacings as we found out. And then the main reason why I didn't finish it during the Frog Watch Retreat is I stuffed up when we came to looking into Fluffy. So let's just bring Fluffy in close. And I'll show you what happened. So you can see here, Fluffy is actually quite a big part of the pattern on the right hand side. And we've got the three different, because he's got three heads, we've got the three heads. Well, when I did it, I realised that I had stuffed up somewhere around here. And I was annoyed at myself. And so I was unripping and undoing my stitches, so frogging. And I made a hole in my fabric. And I had done 
everything else up until fluffy so all of that had been done so I decided you know what I'm not just going to throw it away I'm not going to say giving up I tried to problem solve and think on my feet and you might see here I have a little corner taken out of my fabric it's because I cut a piece and put it behind my fabric and stitch through that and use that as extra holes and just by looking at the fabric from here you can't tell where the hole was this is the back all right so I try to keep a neat back but sometimes it's not always the best so this is my back and other than if you put a fill over it or if you look at it here you can't tell that that's where I've um, had to put another piece of fabric on the back it just makes it looks like you've got an extra pick like your threads are there but this is the back of the, the design I think it looks okay and I saved it by being able to put that fabric behind it so I was really pleased I finished this last year and I'm going to be sending it off for someone to finish hopefully into a flat fold and as you can see I'll be stitching all of the rest of the years from two to seven on the same color fabric which I have um, in, but in different like different pieces of fabric so they're gonna be finished individually side note for those of you who love this pattern chart one which is year one is available in the black needle society in their um, vault however if you want to get charts um, like year two to seven they are not going to be released until possibly maybe the very end of the year uh, end of those seven years if that um, so if you want to continue buying these charts and continuing with the series you will need to buy the Frogwatts box and the Frogwatts box that's happening this year in July okay is only on sale until the 31st of January this month so this month you have until the 31st to get your box you will not regret it they do an amazing job with their boxes and this pattern hands down is one of the I had so much fun stitching this little mini finishes all the way through so year one you can get on their website at the moment as a, a paper chart you want any other year from there so year two to year seven you need to get the box and you've got time running out to get the second box so run go and get it don't miss out okay so now my final finish for the year which is my second finish was the nativity by country cottage needleworks and i started this while i was on the cruise ship on that big um holiday at the beginning of last year end of the end to the beginning of last year i started on the 19th of december and of 2019 and I finished it on the 4th of October 2020. It didn't, shouldn't have taken me that long. It's mainly because I didn't really work on it too much. Um, it only took me probably about 5 or 10 days of that in total working. So this is stitched on 32 count Lagana in Blue Orchid from Colour Cascades. And this is what I've done. So I haven't finished it yet. I'm probably going to again send it off to someone to be finished. I'm thinking a nice long flat fold. Um... And I just love how the colours pop. So it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. It just, let's come in close. You can see that stitching. So the only colour change I did on this pattern, because otherwise I only used the DMC, was when I looked into Mary's, started stitching Mary's dress um, and there was a couple of the colours in the dress that were very similar to this colour fabric so I just changed it like one or two DMC colours in the same colour family, colour family but I love this pattern and I love how it's popping on this blue fabric so no FFOs, I didn't FFO anything in 2020 um, and two finishes so we'll see how many finishes I can get in 2021 all right so we're gonna head into the whip parade now so I've talked about my finishes for last year 
and let's go into what I have on the go at the moment, whether I started it last year or what it had been started beforehand. I have all of my projects in, all of my projects are in here, okay, um, and they're not really organised, they're just kind of here, there and everywhere. So starting off, are we ready? I think I have a total of 20 whips. My number one is in this Love You More Studios sleeve, um, and this one is actually Lara's birthday sleeve. From what I remember. Just those purples, which of course are me. So this is my first um, project for today for my whip parade. And I actually started this last year on the 14th of August 2020. It's called the Mini, um, it's a mini from Heaven and Earth Designs called Soaring Free. And the artwork is by Joan Murray. And this is what I've done so far. So I have done going through most of my projects if they don't have a cover page and I printed off this. So this is what the artwork looks like and of course it's purples and it's butterflies and of course it's me. So I've done about four or five thousand stitches off my head. I've been using Pattern Keeper. I don't have Pattern Keeper with me at the moment so I can't tell you how many I have. But I do have plans this year on getting out this again and doing some more stitches. Um, there is a pile of some white stitches in that right in that left corner um yeah so that's what I've done so I haven't done a lot of work on this project it was only one session that was on my frame and then once I started her and then I put her put it away so I can't wait to continue and they do have this particular whip on my um whip go board so should come up at least sometime this year. Next project is in this bag here. It's called like Tropical Fish. And this was, I bought this at the Show Me Retreat in 2019 and Judy, um, from Judy's bags. I love the ones that she's done like this. I also love her other bags too. In here I have another haid. So it looks like I have all my haids in one particular order. And this one is actually my oldest whip. So this one is called um, A Stitch in Time. Um, the artwork is by Amy Stewart. And I'm doing it in the matte colour, just a regular size version. And this is being started on the 1st of September um, 2018. And... I have did a bit of work on it last year, however I have a lot of plans on it this year. Alright, so this one is being stitched on 25 count Lagana. It's the plain Lagana, I'm stitching it one over one. And as I said, I started it on the 1st of September in 2008. And this is what I've done so far. So I've done, can't really see compared to the photo. But I've been working, started in the top left hand corner. And I have a lot of part threads everywhere. And I've done basically two pages and I'm working on my third page. Very similar amount of progress if you had seen my Once Upon a Time. I love this project, but I'm, because I'm doing it matte colour, it's very intense um, with the amount of colour changes that we have. And you can probably see that by the amount of part threads. So all of these here are a different colour ready going down so I started off one of the lanterns the key is nearly nearly finished I have one book nearly two books done the door has a little bit more here to finish off and then I'll be going down so I've been stitching this one in a hundred one over one blocks like a hundred ten by ten blocks going down diagonally um, which I find has been really helpful for seeing this pro project progress. I do have some lofty goals for this project this year and we'll see if I can make them because it is quite intense each block for the number of colours that they have due to being Matt's colour. But it's lovely now to see these greens coming down here um, and then I think this is nearly the end of my page. I can't remember. I need to again look back on Pattern Keeper to see how far it goes down. 
and I just love how intense that looks. So I've decided for this one I'm going to stitch in pages going down and across. So I've done page one and two, then I'll go down and I'm doing page underneath and I'll keep going back that way. So once I've done this one, I'll go back over here and do this page, underneath and underneath. Alright, whip number three is in another one of Judy's bags of these teapots and teacups. Isn't that pretty? And on the inside we have a lovely pink pastel with flowers inside fabric. Okay, put that over here. Ah, okay, this one is one I've been working on at the moment due to whip go. Alright, so this one I've actually been working on this month because it got called for whip go. And it's the 20 sided dice fairy by Jasmine Becker Griffith. Um, Charter by Have Nerf Designs. Um, I originally had this pattern actually gifted to me when I had my first teaching contract um, and I had a couple of really bad days and I love it as well because it has a dice in it and because I'm a maths teacher. So this is what the picture looks like and I've been working on her during January. January I've already put in about 4,000 stitches on her this month and I had you set my goal quite high so I'm not sure we're going to get there for the rest of the month but we'll see what happens. This is what I've done so far. So again it's been stitched on the 25 count Lugana and I've been working across it diagonally. Now it doesn't look like much but this is probably about one and a half pages because I'm going to continue working across the whole top part of the design um, before going down just to change it up. So you can see I've started to do those little gems in her hair which are here and we're working on her hair and nearly coming to the face. It's been a lot of greens, greens, greens and greens in different var colour variations. I started this one on the 1st of May in 2020 as well. Um, I really enjoy, enjoy working on this. It is looking into some block colours. And I can normally get, depending on the day and if I'm focused, probably three, four hundred, five hundred stitches on it each day. Um, again, it's one over one on the 25 count. And I think about the first page is about here. Because each page, when you're looking at this a regular chart, which is what I have for these, um, is about 8,000 stitches, about 7,000, 8,000 stitches. I've actually gone down and just made it as a full, um, going, normally it's like 90 something. I've just made it the full 10 and then each one normally goes across eight. So I'm just kind of doing it like that. And I think I have another 4,000 or 3,000 to go for my goal. Don't think I'm going to get there, but we'll see. Uh, again, always park. I do a lot of parking with my um, Have Enough Designs. I find... It helps with my brain in just figuring out where to put the threads but also I can kind of plan to pick up them for the next page. What I have been doing is all of the threads for this Have Enough design is in the floss buddy that I won last year. Uh, it's amazing to have up here. We can see all my different colours and I can take it and it's easily portable. Whip number four is in, of course, another Judy bag. Um, and this one I bought again at the Show Me Retreat in 2019. I love these purples, these Louis purples. Okay. Ah, so I must have put all my haze together because this is also another Heaven Earth design. And I think this is my last Heaven Earth design that I have on the go at the moment. But that doesn't mean I have any many more to do. So this one is also by Amy Stewart and it's Once Upon a Fairy Tale. I also have it as a regular but in matte colours. And you've seen many, many, many people stitching on this um, over the course, like over the last couple of months. So I don't have very much progress with this one here. Um, I only started it in December. I started on the 22nd of December just before Christmas. I have about a thousand, one and a half thousand stitches in it at the moment. Um, and I'm going to try out a couple of different ways of stitching just because it's different. 
So this is what I've done so far. I have started it again in the top left hand corner. So we've got the blues and then we've got this building work starting to come through. What I'm thinking of doing actually for this one is still stitching it in the page here, but going down, stitching into like four rows down and then parking down here, do everything in that four rows and then go down and do the rest of the page. Here's four or five rows, depending on what it is. I think it's five actually. Um, yeah, so not a lot of progress, but it was again at Christmas and then that's when we had a lot of family issues. So I will definitely get back to it this year and I'll talk about that in plans. I don't mind if my Heaven Earth designs take me ages to do. I love the process of stitching. Um, and if they take me forever, they take me forever. I have two projects in this bag. And this is the bag we were given um, in the nice list box. So the 25 days box. This was the exclu one of the exclusive and the big item. And it's by Garen Toten Bags. And I have two projects in here. And they kind of relate to the bag as well. The reason is because they also come from the same box. I also started these both on the same day. So this is started on the 29th of December. And this one here is It's the Season to Sparkle by the Tiny Modernist Design. Tiny Modernist. What I'm actually probably going to do is going to change it rather than it. I'm going to change it to Tis. Because when I always think of it, I say Tis the Season to Sparkle. Just what I've always thought. And this is our colour palette. So we have um, our specialty floss on here, which are all weeks, mostly wheat dye wets. And there's also some DMC as well that can be stitched with this. I probably should have measured this a little bit better. I just put it straight back down in the middle of the fabric. Um, but the fabric is my is 28 count linen um, in Phoenician stone by Wipschult. And it's my first ever time stitching on linen. So I've stitched on evenly before, but this is my first linen project. I should have measured my fabric a bit better. So I've started in the middle. So we've kind of have, um, I've got the, the two, um, two letters in the word season, so on and two. And I did that in an afternoon, so it didn't take me very long at all to do. Um, I love the pattern and love the colours. and I'm probably going to maybe bring in some sparkle. And for stitching in one afternoon, it shouldn't take me very long at all to finish. As I said, I put it straight in the middle of my fabric, so... Probably should have thought more about that before I actually finished it. Alright, so the second one that I started on that same day, which was again the 29th of December, was also again from the Black Needle Society box. This one is called Winter Blooms by the Blue Flower, uh, which is Janine McGowan. And the model is stitched on 40 count driftwood linen. And we've also been given the specialty floss. This is the specialty colours that we have. So we have some color, simple shaker, the gentle art threads and some classic colourettes. We also have some DMZ, but they are, the Black Nails they just gave us the specialty colours. And again, I didn't really bother about measuring out the fabric. I put it blank, stank, blank in the middle. Uh, second time now stitching the linen since I've done the 28 count before. However, first time stitching on 40 count. Yeah. Lara, why are you converting me to linen? So this is what I've done. So I've just started in the middle there. So I've done the some of the little snow drop things and then started on the flower. You can actually see that white a little bit better in, in person. Let's see. There you go. So it started in the middle, we can see the top of one of those leaves and then a little drops. So my plan of stitching this is to try and go down and do all the bottom half first because that's where it's really stitch heavy. And then I'll go back up and I'll do the words and the letters because I love stitching words and letters. Yeah. So sneak a little couple of starts before the end of the year. Um, I'll bring them out throughout the course of the year probably in June and 
maybe not July, but June and August sometime where it's a bit cooler for us. Um, because that's when our winter is. So I thought it was perfect to keep both of those projects in my Garen Totem bag, which I also got in the nice spots. Honestly, I should be able to finish those this year if I just put a couple of days stitching into them, especially um, on It's the Season. Alright, this is my next bag. It's one that I got on... Um, Aussie stash on those when we're selling two bags. Uh, it's like a, a filtered type of fabric down here. Um, so it's with these little flowers and with this nice um, polka dot pink fabric. In this design I have my first design that I've ever stitched with silk. So I'm only started this again before the end of the year. Started this on the 30th of December. And it's called Rosetta by Ink Circles. I think it's actually supposed to be this one. Um, I picked up this pattern at the Show Me Retreat um, when we went to CC's. And I saw this on the wall and I fell in love with it. Absolutely fell in love with it. Except it's actually charted to be... Sorry, it's, bit, it's charted to go this way. However, I am not. I'm still stitching it, but I've changed the orientation. I've changed the orientation so mine is going to look like this because I like it that way. And I've kind of changed it up. If you're looking to my fabric and my colours, I when I saw this, I had this design as soon as I saw it about what I wanted to do and how I wanted to stitch it. I had it in my brain, ready to go. I've just never started it. And I know the reason why. The reason why is that I was terrified to cut the silk. I ordered um, some silk from Silk CU um, last year and one of those colours for this pattern. And I've been terrified to cut that, that hank. Terrified. Terrified to cut the hank. However, it's all cut. And I put them on these rings here and to use. So this is my colour. So rather than doing it with the bright colour on it like a cream fabric, I am doing the inverse. So this one's going to be on my cream colour silk. Oh, the light's really picking up. There we go. So it's all cream colour. And I'll show you the other side of the fabric. This is my fabric. See what I'm doing? Doing it the other way around. Using a natural colour silk. So this has been stitched on 32 count um, Lagana. So all of my most of my patterns are on 32 count Lagana, and this is also from Colour Cascades um, because I had a fabric subscription to Colour Cascades. This is the September mystery fabric, and it's called Red is the Roses. Doesn't that look amazing with that silk? Coming in close, you can see what I've done so far. It's going to be this big. Alright, got my board. And that's what I've done so far. Which is why I thought this natural silk will just pop on this fabric. And I know why people like stitching with silk. It's glorious, luscious, and it's amazing. Um, so on this fabric, it's the 32 count, I'm only using one strand, which I don't mind because hand dyed fabrics normally kind of get a little bit tighter. Um, so I think the coverage is great. Um, it's getting a bit washed out by my light because it is in the afternoon here. But you can see that detailing. This is my first ink circles pattern as well. And I thought that this was just a match in heaven with the way the colours were going to go. Seven projects down. I think we'll keep going. So this is number number eight. Again, keeping a similar theme um, of stitching with silk. 
and this was interesting it's not very much of a start but it's been in my bag what like this I've got the purple bag I bought this from Little Boat 88 um, and it has the indigenous turtles on the back and of course this project had to go in here just because of the colors I had an interest time, interesting time dealing with a silk for this one now 2020 you know what pattern this is going to be pandemic by um long don samplers just had to do it i had to get onto that wagon i had to do it um so i downloaded the pattern of course and i started this on the 31st of december just got it in before the start of 2021 and again I'm using a silks I'm using silks for you and this is a silk I'm using so it goes from like a purple through to a blue and then to a pink I had an interesting time trying to cut the colors especially to get the colors so that they um, actually blend um, together so mine will start at blue go through to the purple and the pink and then end up blue that's the way that my colors are going just isn't that gorgeous just looking at the color of variegated variegated and if you know me by now you know they're my colors especially the pinks and the blues because I struggled to cut the hank and organize it the way I like to organize it then I don't have a very big start on this and I didn't I should have done more than I did if I didn't have the silk the um, silk troubles I should be fine actually thinking about it the roses um, the rosetta is stitched with two strands not one sorry it's my mistake it's two strands because this is with one strand now, so I started this on the 31st and I'm using white um, 36 count even weave and I'm stitching over two, which basically brings it down to 18 count. And there's my very minuscule start. So, I just started with a bit on the bottom. But can you see how those colours change? It's gorgeous. And that's like two lengths of floss. I love it so I'm only stitching with one strand for this one not stitching with two just to change it up and also so I have enough thread and I think this is going to look amazing I will do more on this maybe once Lauren if Lara and Keisha find a day that they'll always stitch on it I will join in them join in with them on their long dog for day because I can put this in a cute snap and just work on it from there but I think one over one on 32 count no 36 count I have really good coverage and I'm really happy with that yeah so while it's not a big start it started which means I can work on it this year all right so whip number nine is in my bag here yeah, this one is crabs with the indigenous artwork and I bought this one from the Cricut Wood collection, Crosswing collection on Etsy. I don't have my cover photo or cover picture of this one so I'm going to set a photo someone here. But I started this on the 15th of January in 2020 while we were on the cruise ship. Uh, just needed something that was really really easy to stitch as I'd fallen sick. Um, and I'm stitching this on 22 count, um, I think it's Hardanger by Colour Cascades and this one is called Forbidden Fruit and I picked this up on a stash on load and it's called, the project I'm st stitching on this is the Silhouette Lady um, from Artisy Cross Stitch Designs and this is what I've done so far. So this whole pattern is going to be stitched um, in black. So I'm stitching in DMC 310. Um, and I've done part of her arm and part of the dress. 
and this is just easy stitching I can pick it up put it down just follow through those lengths of thread she will fit on one half of this fabric and then I also have the other half as well so I haven't been bothered to cut it cut it off and then search or sew down but this is where I'm up to yes I know I still have the needle in there but that's fine I'll fix it up later I think she's going to look really lovely all in black on this really vibrant fabric. Um, I wasn't sure what to put her on because the fab, like the stitching, because the fabric is so vibrant. So, yeah, I'm happy with her and I'll continue to work on her. I think I might even just take her to school and keep her in my office and just do keep her some stress relief. Whip 10 is in my another Love You More studio bag. Can't remember what this one is. I think it might be something about sunsets. Um, it's this lovely boutique. And on the inside we have these gold um, sparkly rings. Now, in here I have a different designer yet again. And this was my New Year New Start for 2020. This one is um, from Cottage Garden Samplings and it's a part of the um, Songbird series and this is number 12 which is called Heart Full of Gratitude. I love this series. I have every one of these series and I'm going to finish them individually um, so they'll be on different fabrics and things like that. I am not using the Wheat Style Works. I'm all using the DMC for these ones here. This is what I've done just because it's a smaller design. I've actually used some thread tags um, for them. So I just use them out of cardboard and punch the holes and do that myself. As I said, I started this on the 1st of, oops, back. 1st of January last year. And I'm stitching this on 32 count Lugana and it's golden touch by Colour Cascades. It's an off cut because I've used the fabric before, but I'm actually stitching at one over one. So it's tiny and petite. And this is what I've done so far. So I've done the bird and I've done part of the vines. So you may see a little bit more progress since last time I filmed. There you go, you can see the fabric back there too. So the fabric is this like pinky with the tan colours and I thought that this would just fit perfectly on there. So I'm going across and doing the left hand side, the right hand side first. So I've done, as I said, done the bird and there's another um, leaf and flower head above the bird to the left hand side, at uh, right hand side. And then I'll go down and I'll do um, the greenery at the bottom and then I'll try and get through to that pottery there too. I love how petite these stitches are and while one over one it does get a bit tiresome on the eyes means I can finish them off smaller together and it also means that I, I can get them all on different size fabrics. And I think for one over one my stitches look quite smooth. Sorry, wrong hand. I think my stitches look quite nice and quite smooth and I'm happy with them. There is one of the colours that's very close to the fabric but I'm just going with it and it will be fine. So this one's on my whip go board for this year I think from what I can remember and I'll go through those projects what's on my board when we get to that. Right, halfway through if you need to get a drink or need to get a snack to continue go grab that that's fine pause it we're about halfway through. So, number 11 is in this bag, which I got at the same, bought at the same time from um, Croker Wood Crossing's collection, and this is Mermaids. And in here, I have the one design, one of the main designs I really want to get finished this year. So, this one have, I have a lot of um, brands for, and I've deviated it up, and you'll see why. This is also now my oldest mirabilia design 
and it's Gypsy Queen, which you've probably seen around the co before. I um, love this design. I love the fabric I'm using, and she just pops. And I want to finish her this year. That's my main goal. I want to finish her this year. I have the, fesh, the fibers in little bags for, that I've been using. And she's going to get done this year. She's my aim to finish this year because I love her and she needs to be done. And I want to hang it up on the wall with um, my roses. Now, I started this on the 16th of May 2019. So she's not been that... Oh, she's going... This year will be two years. I won't finish it by May. I know that. Um, just because of the way my work is and things like that. I won't finish her this year by then. But overall by the whole year. She, the fabric is um, 32 count Joblin, which is a gold digger. Again, it's all by Colour Cascades. And I've been working on the bottom half at the moment of the design, which is nearly all finished. Oh, look at those colours on this fabric. I just, 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 just admire those colours. All I have left to do on this half of the fabric is just finishing off her dress here. That's it. It's probably about a thousand to one and a half thousand stitches. But it's all in these block colours here. So it's in these colours and it just goes down and around. And I think I need to finish off the part of the tassel, uh, part of her like, bag here. Um, but most of that's beads. Look at that. Yeah, getting a true, I think the colour's a little bit more rich than that, but doesn't she pop on that fabric? Stitching her skin one over one. Um, and once I do that, so I'm going to finish this part, and then I'll go up and I'll do the top part. Most of the dress is nearly done. So there's a bit more of her dress on the top half, and then it's just her uh, torso, face, and her hair, and then we get to beading. She's going to be done this year. Even if I have to put all my other plans aside, she's going to be done. Because she's gorgeous and she needs to be hanging on my wall. Alright, I need to be working on her. I can't stand her sitting around waiting to be done any longer. I think my fabric, my back's quite nice to her too. You can tell there's a bit of carrying because I do sometimes carry my threads, but not as much as some projects. Project number 12 is in a bags plus bag. So if there's a vinyl on the side, so you can actually, in a pocket, so you can actually put things in here. And then on the other side is um, a zip bag. Just actually been working on this project as well. So you will see a lot of progress because I've been working on this for Whipgo and I've completed my January goal and my goal for the year. So this one here is Queen Mariposa by Mirabilia. Um, I love this design and look at all those butterflies. Mm, butterflies, they're just gorgeous. Her dress bows out. And yeah, so I had to be very careful about where I was put, what fabric I was using for the, this design, but also where I was placing her on the fabric because of what the fabric's like. Now, I started this this year again, so I started in May and it started on the 20th of May. I started this design with um, Vicky from Radiant Stitching who's also known as the headmistress of Magical Stitches, as well as Belinda, who's Aussie Stitcher on um, here as well, and on Instagram. I will insert a photo, possibly, of where I was up to, where you might have seen it before. And I've made a lot of progress in um, already this year. And 
I've been working on the frame going around. My go goal was to get halfway um, of this top um, trellis and I've done that. So we can see those butterflies as well. Though I've started this a couple more butterflies slitted around, but I've, I've achieved my January goal. And I love the colors. And this is what my fabric is. My fabric is 32 count um, Lagana, which is Angel of the Morning, again from Father Cascades. And this is the reason why I had to be careful where I wanted to place it. So I placed it down so we've got the blue up here for the trellis, but we have more of the reds down here from where her blue dress is. And we've also on the side, you can see the red won't fade into the fabric because we have um, pillars next to her and some background design. I'm a little sick of oranges and um, yellows and tans at the moment, but I am pleased where she's up to. So she may come out, come out again this year just to get some work on if I want to. If she fits into a prompt or if I'm in the mood to work on her. But other than that, she's um, done for this year with the, the progress I want to do. I've worked on her salad week this month and I'm happy with where I'm up to. Alright, project 13 is in another Love You No um, Judy bag. This one here. Look at all those swells. And the purple button. Gorgeous. Now, this one is also a Mirabilia design and it is called Zelda. And I love her. I love the pillows that she's leaning on and my goodness, that dress. Here, I've also been keeping in that bag is the embellishment pack with all the beads, which I bought at the same time as buying the pattern at the cross stitch cupboard in um, January this last year. So there's all the beads. And then I also ordered from um, Janet at the end of last year all the water lilies, which stay in the same bag. Now, this is stitched on 32 count Lagana, like most things. Uh, but this one's called Ice Ice Baby, again from Color Cascades. I had a couple of friends help me sort out some fabrics from some projects and this was one of them. I decided to start this on my birthday last year. So this was started on the 19th of November in 2020 and this is what I've done so far. So I start all my mirrors in the middle um, and I started to work down. So you can see what I, this is start, as I said, stitch, I've started on my birthday and I've put about a thousand to two thousand stitches in so far. And I love it. Most of those gaps you see in there are going to be beads. She's quite bead heavy. And yeah, I'm really happy with what I got done. Um, I don't have super plans for her this year. I just thought, well, they're sitting in my stash. I may as well start them rather than not start them. So she's really pretty. I can't wait to work with the water lily. And then to use the beads as well. Number 14 is in this bag here, which is the other one that I bought on Stash and Loader from the same lady. I love the zips bags. I do like seeing the vinyls, but these ones are just really gorgeous. On the inside is a blue fabric that has a slight shimmer on it. Alright, so yet another mirror brilliant. Let's talk about my last mirror that I have on me at the moment. And this one is called The Portrait of Veronica. I love the dresses. <laughs> just, I love the dresses. I, I, I just love that fashion. Um, so this one I started on the 2nd of December in 2020 again. Another one of my 2020 starts. And it's stitched on 32 count Murano. This fabric is actually by the um, Crafty Kitten. And it's called the Frosted Garden. It's called Frosted Garden. And it's like a light, it's a bit more greeny, a little bluey that you can see from there. The light's kind of blowing it out. And this is what I've done. So I've only done, again, probably about a thousand to one thousand and a half stitches on her. 
So you've got the dress and you can see coming down. Over here we've got the big black um, sash coming here and this is the main light section. Again, those missing um, sections there are full of beads which will be done later on. So only a small start but again I was happy with what was going on. It was also December so end of school and then medical appointments and things like that so had a couple of interesting couple of days all right next one is the number 15 in my bag that i bought last year from little boat 88 and it's the beauty of the beast stained glass window gorgeous so this was my very 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 last start for 2020 Oh, I managed to get it in by like half an hour. So I started like 11.30 at night. It counts. Um, I've also done a bit of work on this, like one or two, about the first and second day afterwards, um, just because it didn't feel like enough of a start for me. But this is by Nora Corbett. So same designer as Mirabelli, but Nora Corbett. And it's called Snapdragon. It's part of her Pitsy Blossom collections. And this is a small one. It's only... 85 wide by 157 so quite small compared to most of the other um, mirrors that I've been doing very is this way down so this is being stitched on sparkling diamonds again by the craft and crafty kitten and it's an 8 6, 13 by 18 28 count so she will just fit on here it's a very, no, there we go, you can actually see the colour because of the fabric. And this is what I've done so far. Okay, when I started this, I barely had anything. I think it was like up here. Um, so again, those spots, they're going to be for beads. And I've done a lot of the purple, um, pinky part of her dress there so far. Let's put the fabric. Yeah. So, done a lot of progress on this. Honestly, it's not going to take long. It's only going to take a couple of days. And I should be able to finish this year. It's not one of my goals. But just with how quickly that stitched up, that stitched up in like two days. I'm not really counting the start as a day. Um, it shouldn't take that long at all to continue to do. I love these colours. Again, I think I've said it many times. Purple is my favourite colour. And followed closely by pinks and I think you could tell that by what I've been stitching all right number 16 is in my floss buddy flip by um, bags floss and it's actually an auto whip so we just had a whole heap of new whips this is an auto whip this is one of my older whips I started it in 2019 and I started it with Belinda Aussie Stitcher um, in, I think it was like the 5th of July or something. And it's my first ever Joan Elliott design. And I have it in this book here. And it's called The Dancing Butterfly Fairy. So this is what she looks like, which is the model. And I have changed a couple of things on here. If you can see here, you see all these vinery going around by her feet. I don't like it and I've talked about this before but I don't like that binary so I'm just leaving that off and I'm pleased with what I've done and I'm also hoping that I'll be able to finish this project this year so this is stitched on again 32 count Lagana you've seen this fabric already once before because I stitched the other half on the birds and this is golden touch and this is what I've done so far so I've basically done the bottom half completely. I've back stitched the left page completely, um, other than a part, no, not completely. There's a part up in her dress. And all of this page is done, including the chronic. And I just need to back stitch this bit here. And then I plan to go up and I finish page, um, the top two pages. Look at that detail. And you can actually see the shimmer of the chronic. I think she pops on this fabric just with the pink and then you've got the tans around here just to dull it down a little bit and these colours are so vibrant compared to what they could be 
Again, I'm hoping I'll be able to finish her this year. Um, I might bring her out and just do some back stitching on there for a couple of days and then just on those first, those bottom two pages. And then from there I will um, head up and I'll do the stitching on the top page. Whip number 17 is a, another new start for 2020. And this one is very, very emotional and special to me. This bag is from Silks For You. And it has a really special project in here. And the project is by Glendon Place and it's called Someone We Love. It was a special edition in 2019 and I bought this from um, CC's at the Show Me Tree. It is called, um, and I love this saying, as soon as I heard this, saw this saying, all I could think of was my Nana Shalom Grand had who inspired me to stitch. So it says, because someone we love is in heaven, there's a little bit of heaven in our home, except I'm probably going to change home into in our hearts, because I always call, read it as there's a little bit of heaven in our hearts. So hopefully I'll be able to adjust the um, spacing. When I bought this, I thought it was a full kit, so I'm not using this Ada. I do have the Ada here, and it had, came with the bees and the charm and the silks. So the silks are all with the dinky dye silks um, that came with the kit. And I changed the fabric. So the fabric I'm using is called Silver Ash, and it's an even weave from... Again, from I bought it from So at All, but I'm not sure who it's actually from, if that makes sense. And this is what I've done so far. I've only had like one a month or so, like one stitching session on it. I am really happy with the progress and the amount of detail I have in this. And I'm actually gonna, I really probably should stitch on this today. Because today is Granddad's birthday. I'm not sure if I got the mental capacity to do it today though. So I have broken this down, and this is another one I want to finish this year. Um, I've broken it into sections as well for different goals about what I like to do. So I I think for the first like this page here, most of the words are done. I need to do. I think I've got to do because. Um, and then I'm going to do the border around and then I'll move down and I'll go to here. But I thought this fabric works perfectly for it and the colours are popping. I will definitely, regardless of when it's cold, probably work on it in um, August, maybe also in, in um, April. Just because of family. But it's on my whip go board a couple of times. Um, and I really want to get this done this year. That's my main goal. Uh, not my main. One of my main goals. In here I have two projects. So this is project 18 and 19. And it's in a bag again from Silks For You. And I have my Norbert frag tag from the frog wet spots and I have two projects in here and they're both by the same design so we'll see which one comes up first now this designer is a Russian designer so I'm going to put the name across the bottom because I'm going to butcher the name and it is famous Russian designers are famous for doing lots of blends so I've gone through and I've already put not all my blends but partial of, of my blends together, depending on for both of them. I forgot to say for someone we love, I started that on the 1st of August. And the reason I started then is because that was the date that my granddad died. So it was really special for me to actually start up on that day. Then actually the next one I went from there is Ravenclaw Emblem by DM at Stitch. It's an Etsy um, shop and it's by... Again, the designers under here. Um, I feel like when I've been sorted, I'm a Ravenclaw. So that's from there. I started this with Chloe, and we both started this on the 12th of September. 
because she decided to have a start everything month. Again, it's on 32 count. It's from Even Weave. It's from Sew It All. And this one is called Blue Clouds. And this is where I'm up to. That's what I've done so far. I've even started a little bit of the back stitching here because there's quite an intense back stitching. Um, and I love the colours so far. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, that there are so many blends. I have a goal to just do work on this this year. Um, we'll see how much I can get done. And it is just, I love how it's going to pop on this fabric. There is half stitches and full stitches as well. Also, if you didn't know, these patterns here for me, other than the back stitch, work on Pattern Keeper. So I'll be able to keep my progress on that. This one I started straight after I got about a thousand stitches in the Raven Emblem. And I started this on the 18th of September. And these are the blends. So it's by the same designer. We have the blends yet again, which I've already started doing just to save my mind. And I started the Slytherin Crest. So I will eventually have the other two started as well, which is a Gryffindor and Raven at Hufflepuff. We just needed to double check some fabric. And these are such a lovely stitch. Um, they're just really pretty. They are mindless, slightly, other than the blends. Again, 32 count even weave from Sew It All. And this one is called Springtime. And I've actually put more work into him than Ravenclaw at the moment. But look at those colours. The inside of the project is about here. So we're not too far away from the edge on that side. And here we go. Oh yeah, there you go. You got the fabric colour there. Yeah, so working on the towards the right hand side of the fabric and then we'll go around. And my very, very, very last work in progress, whoops, is in a bag by bags plus. And if you can't tell, there's a lot, a lot of beads and chronic on that side, as well as on this side. Which project haven't I shown you yet? That may be using, oh, I don't know, water lilies. Dinky Dyes, Gloriana's, Petite Treasure Braid. What projects use them all the way? What might be stitched in sparkly fabric? And have a whole heap of delicate beads. Anyone guessed? And this is one design where you need to know which side is top and which side is bottom because otherwise it's symmetrical. So this is a pattern that I started in 2019. No, not even, no, even before that, 2018. And it's another birthday start. So I started this on the 19th of November, 2018. It is on 28 count white and it's opalescent. So you might be able to see that sparkle. Stitched with Dinky Dyes, DMC, Gloriana's. Water lilies, petite treasure braid. Anything else? Guess what it is? Butterflies. Of course, it's Butterfly Lace Mandala by Chatelaine. And this is what I've done. So I still have a long ways to go. So I've been working on this middle section here. And I haven't used one stitch of DMC yet. I've used everything else but DMC. Just look at those colours and how it sparkles on this fabric. Can you see how it sparkles? Yeah, you can see the sparkle there. So I have this as a goal for this year as well. Not to do very much, but just to kind of go around and finish off the middle section. Because it's intense work and 
while I love stitching on this, I have to be in the frame of mind where I want to be able to focus. Let's bring it in close so I can actually see. Can you see it? There you go. You can actually see the shinies and the metallic. And looking in the very colours variegated. I don't have a cover photo, so I'll make sure I put that in somewhere. But yes, um, I am going to continue to work on this. I've done some of the eyelets and some of the road stitches so far, I think. But there's a lot to go and I'm using it as a learning process. And that's just some of the threads. And here's the rest. So we have even more dinky dyes, even more guarianas and water lilies. I do have some of the um, Ed Ma threads and then a whole heap of petite treasure braid and beads. So that's all my whips. I have 20. Guess down the bottom how many I may finish this year. I don't know. Let's see what I may do. How many pages I may finish on my hates. How many things I'll finish completely. I won't finish a hate this year. But on that, we'll see what happens. Next thing I just want to quickly go through is looking into plans. Um, and basically, I decided to join Jessie Marie Does Stuff Her Whip Go. I thought about it last year, kind of went about too late and then just kind of did what I did but I'm really looking forward to trying to see what projects I can focus on each month and then what goals so I was able to use the template on my iPad and I made my own and this is what I've come up with so far so this is my got my board and then I have several projects on there and I've divided them up into not just different whips but I've put each of them as different goals as well. So I'll probably put in so a photo where you may be able to see it better. But so for the first one, block number one, it says for me, Butterfly Lace sh um, by Chatelaine. And for me, I just want to finish the middle section of the cross stitch, um, just the cross stitch part. If I get some of the specially designed parts in there too, but I just want to finish the middle bit. Um, number two is my Butterfly Lace Berry. And that's the top left page. Then from there, I've gone to a stitch in time by Heaven Nerf Designs. And I like to get either finish off that page that I'm doing or to get 8,000 stitches, which is basically a page finish. Gypsy Queen Mirabilia. Um, I have this one set up quite a few times. And depending what I've done so far will depend which actual stitching goal I do. But the first stitching goal I have is to finish the dress as well as finishing the skin on one of the one on her arms. Then I have Someone We Love by Glennon Place is to complete the wording and the border on the top half. So just basically complete the top half. Top half. Number six, which was actually called this month, was Queen Mariposa, which was to complete the border on the top half of the pack design. Done. Good. Mark it off. Then number seven, we had 20 sided dice berry, which was either one page or the equivalent of 8,000 stitches. Again, Summon We Love by Glennon Place. And then I've got complete the wording for the bottom half. Uh, then we have Dancing Butterfly Fairy from Joan Elliott to finish off the skin on the top page, on the top right hand, because that's again one over one. A stitch in time comes back and again we're going for a page finish or 8,000 stitches. Then we have someone we love which is complete the border for the bottom half and then to bead the whole project. So basically that's a finish. Again if one of the other ones come up first I'll do those goals first. A stitch in time again another page finish. We have the free space. Then we go into um, a mini soaring free which is my butterfly one another page finish and then I go up to Gypsy Queen again and I want to finish her face so if this one gets cold before the other one I'll do that just swap the gold around 
Then I have my Gratitude Cottage Garden Samplings, which is complete all the, all the flowers and the leaves on the right hand side of the pattern. Then I've got Once I Do Gypsy Queen, the last goal I have for her is complete the beading and all the bat stitch, um, which then means it'll be a finish. Then I have 20 Sided Dice Fairy, which is the one that's been called, which is eight equivalent to a page, 8,000 stitches. So I have about 3,000 stitches to go. We'll see if I make it. Maybe not. Then we have Zelda. I just put from Mirabilia, put 2,000 stitches. Um, Ravenclaw Emblem by DMC, DM at Stitch is 1,500 of full crosses. So if I do any of the half crosses as well, I have to make sure I do double that to get the full crosses. Portrait of Veronica, again by Mirabilia, what, 2,000 stitches on that. Um, Ravenclaw Emblem, again, 1,500 of full stitches, not half. Then, oh, I do, no, I do have Queen Mariposa on one here one more time. My mistake, I do have it once more. And that's to complete the face and the dress part of the bodice of the top half. So just basically doing the top half. I might double check that, but I think that's what I mean. Then I have a stitch in time again, um, 8,000 stitches and mini sorry free for 8,000 stitches. Get some finishes and try and go from there. I'm also this year not trying not to do new starts. Um, I'm not... I'm a part of the group No Year New Year Starts, but I haven't got my whip album and I haven't paid. So I'm just kind of doing it myself and the way I want to do it. And if anything, there's only one thing I'll start this year, even if that means I get Chloe to start it and then I'll continue stitching on it. And that's the Frog Watts Year 2 pattern. I have to continue with it. So that's the only thing I really have planned. Whereas I really want to get some work on just using all my projects and again this year focusing more on some heaven earth designs and getting my hay my gypsy queen finish last thing i really want to quickly show you some things that come in the mail um towards the end of last year um basically is some fabric so i know i'm not starting anything but i can always continue to increase my fabric stash these two are from crafty kitten and they are both 28 count Except this one is a Jobelon and it's 25 by 27 and it's called Easter Dream. Oh god, okay, I think we'll need the board again. Now that's getting completely washed out. Let's get the board and see if the white against the board will work. That's better. It is there we go. It's a bit more of those blues and those greens. So nice pastel colours which I'm really enjoying and can use anything for those. And then there's this one here which is also from Crafty Kitten. It's 13 by 18 and it's an oddment. So it's one of the ones that's not named. And it's just a nice lightish with some yellow touches on there. You can do anything on these ones. Then, while I, at the moment, I'm not buying Colour Cascades, like where you have to wait for the fabric, she's had put up some of the oddments and different sizes on her website, which means that they're just ready to ship and you don't have to worry about waiting. So, some of these are card maker size, some of these are di different sizes. I don't know what the names are, I don't know what fabric they're from. This one is 32 count Joblin, which is a 10 by 14, and it's just a night blue. I think this is actually Ice Ice Baby, looking at the fabric from what I've been using for um, Zelda. This is a nice little one. This one is 28 count, which is 9.5 by 11. Again, a smaller, smaller piece. Then here we have just an 8 by 15 of 28 count. Nice peach colour. This one is an 8 by 18 32 count Joblin. 
an orange. And I know I'm not a big orange stitcher, but I have a plan for this one. And the final one we have here is a 32 count 15 by 15 base. Which I think is like a sorcerer from the top of my head. So that's Colour Cascades. And then last one, I decided to try out some fabric from Dye for Cross Stitch, which is, I think is Kathy. Um, and she moved, did a sale on Thanksgiving weekend. So I bought some. Again, I tried to go for colours that I don't normally go for. And most of, all these are 32 count. This one is Lagana. And it's a mixture of tans, oranges, and browns. So, something different. A nice neutral. I normally go for blues, purples, and greens. So, and my pastel colours. But I think that's a really nice neutral. I have an idea, maybe, of what I could use it for. This one is the called Multicolor and it's an 18 by 37 piece of Jobelin. So it's still 32 count, but this is Jobelin. Oh god, it's huge. Isn't that pretty? Let's see. You've got greens, purples, and blues, and yellows. That's just fun. Would not hesitate to order from her again. Really good customer service. And didn't take awfully long actually coming from the States. Which was good for me. And then this one is a test. It's also a Jobelin 17 by 18 called Holiday Lights. Now isn't that wicked? That is super fun. And my colours. So I'll put something on there that's going to be fascinating. And we're done. So I know it's super long. Um, but thank you for coming. If you have watched all the way to the end. Thank you for returning and subscribing. Um, I will try and put details of all my whips down below. I'll, if not I'll link to a document that you can see them in or something like that with photos. Um, that, that, that might take a bit of time to come to happen. And, oh, also what I'm doing at the moment is I've actually created a buy me a coffee. If you do want to support me, you can. You don't, you don't have to. Um, that link will be below as well. But yeah, I'm hoping to get lots of progress this year and we'll see if my plans come to fruition. And I hope everyone is doing well with their plans and their stitching. And just stay safe. Bye.